Hi, welcome to the Todd and Deborah Show. This is episode 45. We are thrilled to have with us as our guest, Dr. Keith Diaz. He's the assistant professor of behavioral medicine at Columbia University. Dr. Diaz, I have a feeling you've probably been doing wall-to-wall interviews ever since the release of results from your study. If you would, just for whoever it is out there hiding under a bush that didn't hear about the study, just briefly describe it. Sure. Um, so really what we looked at was whether sitting increases one's risk of death. And, and surprisingly, what we found is that it's a really strong predictor of a risk of death, regardless of whether or not you exercise. That's the weird part, because yeah. we're very thrilled that we managed to get ourselves exercising like a few yeah, years we ago. Yeah. We built up to four miles a day. So we're feeling kind of invincible. Plus, we're eating healthy and all the different things that as you get older, you start to really listen to. But then to read this... People are saying that sitting is the new smoking because it's that certain of the health problems. Yeah. And so I don't want people to be scared by this fact. Exercise is still important and still one of the most important health behaviors that you guys can do. But what we're finding is that I think it's important that we not just move for the four miles a day that you guys get in walking, but that we're moving frequently throughout the day. Our bodies are just not meant to sit still for long periods of time. That's surprising to me. I mean, I... I, I, Deborah read this to me and I said, oh, what BS. That's the problem. I think there are so many of us who, when we hear something that we don't really want to hear, you know, our inclination is always, ah, I'm going to do what I want to do, by golly. If that's your choice and you can live with it or die with it, whichever, you know, I mean, people no. are, are, you know, able to make their choices. If you would describe how we know that we can really trust these results. Yeah, this was a study that's been going on for many years. It's a study called the Regards Study, which has over 30,000 patients in which we've been following them up for well over 15 years to see um, what factors predict, particularly stroke. Um, the study was mainly designed to understand why people in the South have greater risks of stroke. And so this actually was a unique opportunity for us to study why sitting is also a risk factor for things like stroke, heart disease, and just death in general. I thought it was interesting earlier how you pointed out that just being in one position or just being still, it's the sitting, of course, is what a lot of us do. And those of us with back issues already have learned long ago that sitting is not our friend. But even standing, the body just wants to be able to move. I, I keep thinking of the Tin Man and the Wizard of Oz. What specifically about sitting, though? I, I assume that it's a circulation problem, or is it a it's, combination? It, it, it's metabolic toxicity. He did his homework. So yeah, let me, Deborah, just to your first point, because I think you brought up a really nice point about this notion that standing could also in some ways not be very good for you either, um, because there's this big push now that there's all these standing desks that people are buying for their workplace and stuff. And there really isn't strong evidence that standing is any better than sitting. Um, so I think you highlight an important point that moving appears to be the more helpful thing that we should be doing. Now, in terms of why sitting is so bad for us, we don't know quite yet, but we have some ideas. And so some of the best evidence suggests that our muscles just don't take up blood sugar as it should when we sit for long periods of time. So certainly that brings the same risk as someone who has diabetes because their blood sugar levels are really high. And one of the other issues is related to blood pooling in our legs. We think that's very harmful oh, for our blood that vessels. That makes sense. And increases our risk of things like peripheral artery disease, deep vein thrombosis, et cetera. So if we can just train ourselves. The right, other right, day we right. were watching TV, and when we got a little over half an hour, I said, okay, Todd, let's stand up and do our movement, you know. And yeah, I just th – thanks a lot. <laughs> Doctor, I really, you know. And you really mean things, don't you? <laughs> oh, From yeah. From the bottom yeah, yeah. of your heart. Bottom of my heart. I just walk in place, and for the heck of it, I do a couple of, you know, squats or whatever, just because so far I still can. And he was kind of laughing at me, but I think now we're going to pop up together, right? You're going to do think, something. Yeah, we'll do something. It was the same way when we realized what diet does, because diet, yeah. I think, is one of the top killers these days, too. Yep. They've Right? Yep after cigarettes or maybe even surpassing it. Well, that's the one question that, that I had too in, in, in relation to this, you know, diet and exercise, supposedly the more you do and the more you change your diet to be less, you know, more plant-based and things like that, you can not only stop, but maybe correct some things that have gone wrong with you. Can you do anything with this? I mean, is it that you reach a plateau and even if you start it's moving, it's, it doesn't get any better, or does things improve? Just wondering, are we going to reverse anything or just prevent further? 
Damn it. The evidence isn't there yet, but I can certainly speculate that I think it's reversible. Once we start moving again, our blood vessels can recover to some extent. Our muscles can start pulling out the blood sugar better again. So there are ways in which we can reverse this, I think. Just getting into the habit is is the hardest part, like with anything. You know, when we first started eating healthy, we were kind of like, you know, because healthy to us meant it's not going to taste good. It's going to be, but we'll get through it. It's like eating cardboard or whatever. It's so astounding to us how our taste buds changed and became addicted to drinking more water and eating healthy foods. And now it's so much easier. And I guess, is there anything wide words of wisdom for, let's say, seniors? Really, I think it's a simple message. Sit less, move more, and move frequently. I think that's really the message. Just get moving. Don't, you know, we put out the guideline or the, the suggestion that every 30 minutes take a break. We know that's hard to do, myself included. It's hard to find every 30 minutes to stand up and move around. But the the message is itself, just move as frequently as you can, when you remember to and when you can. Even on an airplane, you can stretch your legs, you can move your feet, just whatever you can do. You know, pretty soon, hopefully, everybody will know about this and you'll see everybody finding ways to do little mini calisthenics or something. Thank you so much for giving us your time today, Dr. Diaz. This has been yeah, a treat. It's, it's, to... it's a pleasure to talk to folks about these kind of things. And, and please... congratulations on your studies and, and the work that you guys are doing. Kudos to you all. I mean, that's quite great. Thank you guys for the opportunity and giving us this platform.